A 69 kilogram student travels to space on a hoverboard to the location shown. So she travels to right here. The distance from her location to the surface of the Earth is 7.2 times 10 to the 6 meters. And we're trying to figure out what's her weight on the Earth, what's her weight on the hoverboard, and how far away from the center of the Earth is she when she's on the hoverboard. All right, so to start off, to figure out her weight on Earth. Well, we know on Earth that the gravitational acceleration is 10 meters per second squared, so we can just do her mass, which is 69 kilograms, times 10 meters per second squared, and that gives her a weight on Earth of 690 newtons. All right, we already knew how to do that. Things get a little bit more interesting when she travels away from Earth. So when we are not at the surface of the Earth, we use Newton's law of gravitation. So Newton's law of gravitation states that the gravitational force is equal to the gravitational constant times the product of the two masses divided by the distance between them squared. Now keep in mind that this distance r right here is the distance between the centers of the two objects. So what we're really looking for is the distance from the hoverboard to the center of the Earth. So I already know the distance to the surface of the Earth, but I need to add this little distance right here to figure out the distance to the center of the Earth. Well, that distance right there is just the radius of 6.37 times 10 to the sixth. So if I add those two together, I can get 1.36 times 10 to the seventh meters. All right, and this is going to go into our equation. So I'm going to go ahead and list out the things that I'll need to plug in. So G, M, M, and R. So again, R is the distance between the two object centers, which turned out to be 1.36 times 10 to the seventh meters. So I can go ahead and put this in. This is my first answer, and I can actually enter this in as 1.37e7. So that is the JavaScript version of scientific notation right there. All right, so that leaves me. Capital G is the gravitational constant, which is always 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons meters squared per kilogram squared. That's true anywhere in the universe. And then Newton's law states that, Newton's law of gravitation states that any two masses in the universe pull on each other with a gravitational force, where big M and little m represent the two masses. For this problem, it doesn't really matter which we call which, but we generally say the big, bigger object is capital M. So we're talking about the interaction between her when she's at that location and the Earth itself. Clearly the Earth is bigger than her, so for big M, I'm going to put the maths of the Earth, which is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. And for little m, that's her mass, which is 69 kilograms. Remember, her mass doesn't change. Her mass is how much stuff she's made out of. So I can go ahead and plug that into my universal law of gravitation. So g times m times little m divided by r squared. If you have access to a computer calculator for your quiz and your homework, then I highly recommend using Desmos Scientific Calculator. If I plug that in, I can just type in the given, and then type in my equation, and I get 149 newtons. All right, I feel good about this answer because I know that the farther away from Earth that I travel, the lower my weight will be. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at another problem. So in this problem, a 62 kilogram student travels to the moon. As for her weight on Earth and her weight on the moon. So on Earth, I can just do 62 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. I could use Newton's law of gravitation, but I already know uh, the surface of the Earth. Uh, gravitational acceleration is 10 meters per second squared giving me 620 newtons. All right, then it asks me for what is her weight on the moon. So over here on the moon, I know that the two objects that are interacting are the moon and her. So I'm going to go ahead and write down, I know I'm going to use 
universal gravitation, so G M M divided by R squared. And I can write out my constants. I write out what goes in the formula. The first of which is the gravitational constant. This is G equals 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. All right, in this case, the two objects that are interacting are her and the moon. The larger of those is, of course, the moon, so the mass will be 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. The smaller one is her, and her mass is 62 kilograms. Now, in this case, the radius Remember, the radius is the distance between the center of the two objects. Remember, she is obviously not drawn to size. So the distance between the objects is just this distance from the center of the moon to her, which is the radius of the moon. So 1.74 times 10 to the sixth meters. All right, if I plug that in, I can plug that into my universal gravitation equation right here and I end up with a weight of almost exactly 100 newtons. And this makes sense to me because I know that when she goes to the moon, the moon is much smaller um, than Earth, and I expect her to have less weight. In fact, your weight on the moon is about a sixth of what it is on Earth. All right, let's take a look at one other problem. So this one says a student weighs 685 newtons on Earth, but travels to another planet where she weighs 295 newtons. All right, so starting off, we want to find out what's her mass. Well, I can use this weight on Earth to help me figure out what her mass is going to be. So 685, I know that on Earth, gravitational constant is 10 meters per second squared. I can just divide and figure out that her mass is 68.5 kilograms. This helps me out because her mass doesn't change. So now she goes to the other planet where she only weighs 295 newtons. So we want to apply Newton's law of gravitation when she's on the other planet. So when she's on the other planet, the gravitational force is between her and the planet. I know I'm going to use Newton's law of gravitation, but I'll use it in a little different form. All right, and I'm trying to solve for the mass of the planet, which we know is capital M. The other mass involved is her mass, which is 68.5 kilograms. All right, so I'm looking for three more given. I know that when she's on this planet, the distance from the center of the planet to her will just be the radius of that planet since so she's on the surface. So that is 4.89 times 10 to the seventh meters. I know that the gravitational constant is always 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. And remember that gravitational force, when you're on the surface of a planet, we tend to call that your weight, is 295 newtons. All right, so now we can use Newton's law of gravitation. So Fg equals gmm divided by r squared. But I know I want to solve that for capital M. So what I would do is I'd first multiply both sides by r squared. Sorry, that shouldn't cancel, so we still have an r squared right there. And then divide both sides by g and little m. So that rearranges to give me the equation capital M equals f, I'm going to drop that little g, so just say f times r squared divided by g times little m. So I'll go ahead and copy that over here. F r squared divided by g times little m. Again, I highly recommend plugging that into Desmos. Then you can type in your given and type out this equation for capital M. If you do that, you will end up getting 
1.54 times 10 to the 26th kilograms. By the way, I feel good about that answer because, well, first of all, it's huge. It's 1.54, and then there are 24 zeros after that. But that's okay, because I expected a huge number because we're figuring out the mass of a planet. When comparing that to Earth, I can tell it's a little bit bigger. You really, when you're comparing these, you want to look at these. Um, you just want to look at the exponent in the scientific notation. So this is telling me that this planet, since there's a 26 here and a 24 there, has a couple extra zeros on the end. So this other planet was bigger than Earth, but it's a relatively similar size. But you want to make sure those exponents look the same, look similar, because we're talking about planets. And in positive physics, I can type that in as 1.54 and then e 26. The e means times 10 to the 